Beth and Don. We're good, we have sound? It sounds like we have sound. Okay. We've got an incredible view at the window here. Oh, yeah. Just so you know, we got the good seats. <laughs> Oh, no. 
you are introduced to you. This is Nicholas Pascal, you've already met, and my name is Jan. Together we are Jean Scott. And it's a true pleasure to be back for a third time here at Millery Festival, almost on the green. And uh, so happy to be here. Like I said before, thanks for braving the weather. I know it's a pretty intense time in Vermont these days, and uh, hopefully if you have people, um, family, uh, be there for them. <laughs> we're pretty lucky here, I think, so far. So um, well, we're going to play some, some music from Quebec, that's what we do. But before that, uh, before we put too much focus on us three, I'll, uh, how about we hear another hand for the Rooted Pickers? Yeah. <laughs> Also, before we put too much focus on ourselves, I, we want to, 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 to kind of uh, underline the work of someone in this community here. Uh, I hear it's her last time working on this festival and she's working on a new project. But we have a little, uh, we just want, really want to embarrass Beth Duquette now. And I think we want to invite her here on stage with us for And whenever I go see concerts anywhere in New England, close or far from here, I go to the best concert and I look next to me is Beth because she's such a fan of music that she travels all around to hear all the bands. And, uh, and that's how I know she's a serious presenter. She looks for the, the great bands, she digs, and she brings back amazing music here at the Ripton Coffee House. It's the first time we met her. Pascal and I played a duo show many years ago and we were still remember the amazing welcome we had there. And now to new adventures with the Burnham Hall series in Lincoln, and where we're going to play in March. So, but I, Don, I think Don has a little, uh, a little word for you. All right. Can you hear me? Yeah. This is uh, kind of a certificate from many of us that says, oh, the board, yeah, we're, we're really going to the board of Middlebury Festival of the Green and your fellow volunteers would like you to know how much we appreciate your many years of valuable and varied contributions to the organization, not the least of which has been your guidance and leadership of the program committee. It is largely due to your efforts that musicians from all over the world consider performing at the festival one of the best summer gigs in the country. We wish you the best in all your future event endeavors, musical and otherwise, and hope you will continue to join us at coming festivals for many years to come. Let's give her a hand. French, it means the heart, and Aube is Dawn, so the heart of Dawn. 
We love that idea, this moment between dark and light. And, but there's also cœur, um, translates to choir in French. The same word for choir as the heart. So the choir of Dante the Dawn, or the Dawn Chorus, is all the birds who sing at their loudest in the morning. And, and it just so happened that on our the repertoire, the old songs we picked for this album, there's little birds here and there in all the songs, sometimes as a main character, sometimes as a messenger of love, like it's often the case in these songs. And some more unfortunate uh, or unlucky ones, like the one that the song that Nicholas is about to sing, where the bird features as the main ingredient for a meat pie. <laughs> so he's going to, shoot, to sing Belle Alouette au champ, beautiful lark in the field. Belle Alouette au champ, y'a rien de si charmant. Belle Alouette au champ, y'a rien de si charmant. Quand il fait de la pluie, elle ment du beau temps. Oh là Impossible to pass, 
But as, as kids, I was always really excited to go through that road because there was this element of danger that, uh, that I loved. Um, so this, this is a tune I'm going to play that, that, um, that, that I wrote and, uh, and it kind of channels that element of crooked danger of the Chemin des Montagnes Noires. So this is the, the Brandy des Montagnes Noires. Have some your seat thoughts. There's chief of the other Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Often, um, kind of two, I've 
in this song there's two groups of people, the people who stay at home and, and sing about their loved ones who are far from home they haven't seen for a long time, and obviously people who are the sailors and who miss their home, and songs from both camps, and they're pretty isolated, I feel, in these Quebec songs, except that when the lark arrives, we have this, this bird that can magically go uh, very far, many times on the way, park themselves on the top of the riggings of the ship, and wait and listen to the conversation, and when there's some crunchy things happening, you can just fly back and bring the news home. So, another, another role of birds have in these songs, there is a gossip uh, carrier. So we'll sing, um, dans les aubans, it means high up in the riggings.
But while, while Pascal's tuning down to his vieux la seule tuning, um, I'll, I'll just mention that. So Jan mentioned that these birds have made their way into the into the album, the music that we we've been making, and so we've we've kind of felt an obligation to enhance our ornithological, um, uh, you know, uh, learning uh, through the course of this process of doing the album. We've learned so many really interesting things about birds, and I'm just going to share the one, the one thing that really stood out for me that I didn't know before is that most uh, bird song, like songbirds, they, they're born with a certain number of sounds they can make, but they actually have to learn their songs from, from the parents. And, and so there's this process that usually takes between 30 and 60 days where the, the parents will be like, and the thing would be, and, and gradually they, they just pick it up and they accumulate all of the, the whole repertoire of songs that is necessary for them to survive. And, and so it's this kind of oral tradition that, that, that gets passed down, and that these, these repertoires actually can, can vary from, from year to year, from region to region. The, the, I think the white-throated sparrow is one of the examples. Well, sometimes there like, will be a, a, a sparrow that might migrate up from North Carolina or somewhere, come up to Quebec, and, and maybe sing their song with this cool little, like, you know, twang, and, and all of the white-throated sparrows will be like, I'm not going to do this boring. I'm maybe exaggerating, but it, it's it's true that 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 will happen, and it can be like a, the hit of 2023 and 2024. All the white-throated sparrows are going to be doing that that thing. Um, so it, I find it just fascinating how how um, um, if you take the time to kind of open your ears and and, and, and listen. You, Discover all kinds of nuances in the, in, this, in, the, in the world. There's culture yeah, there's everywhere. There's culture everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I'm going to let Pascal. He's going to play this beautiful tune called La Cafardeuse, and this is. It makes me think of that phenomenon because it's a tune that actually has many different variations. Like more, most fiddle players, if you ask them to play that tune, you'd be hard pressed to find two that play it exactly the same. So um, I'm going to ask our own. Ruby throated warbler Pascal Jean to start off this beautiful tune, La Carte de Luz, and then we'll join him uh, on, uh, for another real, real La Chance.
Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yoof. Well, I'll talk a little bit after that because I, I need to catch my breath. So I'll, uh, I'll talk slowly to you. I'm, I'm going to sing the next song. And uh, there's many things that I like about that song. First of all, you know, with uh, John Dickerham has been known over the last 23 years to uh, kind of find the songs with the, the hardest or longest possible choruses in them, and that <laughs> makes the least sense. <laughs> and I think that this song kind of fits in that genre that I like very much. And you would repeat that. <laughs> so it's something about the rhythm. It's great. It's pink. No, it's great. I mean it's great, but really it's pink. Oh no, it's, it's great. <laughs> kind of something like that. <laughs> and uh, another thing that I kind of attracted me to that song is that there's really not that it's, usually there's kind of a funny story in those uh, in those songs, and uh, there's no story in that song. <laughs> it's more to me. It's more like a, we're taking a stroll in a in a, a painting. So it's the painting of a beautiful garden with uh, flowers everywhere, nice apple trees in bloom, and nice green bushes. And uh, then at the very end, we walk, and there's a a puits. A well. There's a well. Où la caille et la perdrix ont fait leur nid, where the quail and the partridge have made their nest.
Well, I always love what a, what a beautiful space this is. I mean, we were looking forward to being outside in a beautiful summer evening, but this is a pretty nice uh, second option here. And um, I, I love, you know, these buildings are meant, meant for music and singing. Um, we're going to sing their song now, an a cappella song, and maybe we'll go, we'll go off mic to just give you the real natural resonance of the space. Spending time in good company. So here's our, our hymn to uh, pleasure. Who don't please? Ghost style, just just for perfect motion. 
behind him. And just yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a beautiful sight. Maybe something you can keep in mind for the next. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 His mom actually confided in me once that when when she wanted to make him feel better, she kind of stood behind him with some pebbles and just. <laughs> <laughs> Still practicing. <laughs> you know it's about 40 meters, so that's like 120 or 130 feet maybe. The goal is to do the whole river all across. I don't know how many how many skips that will be, but he can do it. <laughs> yeah. But I spent hours and hours in that river before I knew Jan and just fishing and learning all the great spots where I could catch some smallmouth bass in the afternoon, the smaller ones that are really feisty and just jump and fight with them, and then the big ones a little further where I lost so many lures <laughs> with those fishes, and then the, the, my favorite walleye hole where I would fish really late at night, getting eaten by millions of mosquitoes and black flies, but it was worth it, you know, because I had some help. I had the bats over me <laughs> to eat as many of those as they could. So I spent thousands of hours uh, on the bank and in that river and uh, decided to dedicate a, a melody for it. And that's what we're going to play now. Old Yamaska.
Falquez. Together with John Chikron, it's been such a pleasure to be here with you tonight. We have one more song on the for that. We sent a lot of love and a lot of thanks to many, many people. First, Josh, our sound person tonight. Thank you, Josh. It's a pleasure to be with you. Thank you so much. Thanks to Don, who's, who's, who's organized this event. Glorious thanks to Beth Duquette and everything she, 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 she brought to this concert series. Um, thanks to all the volunteers. You wouldn't believe it. Good play we had downstairs and food. And thanks mostly of you for coming, breaking the elements, and supporting your local festival. Um, thank you so much. Uh, just like the Ruta Beggars, which we also thank, uh, we also have some merch, some CDs to sell, a new, uh, new album. You can buy it there, or you can buy it on Bandcamp if you listen that way. Follow us on social media if that's something you're into. But um, thank you so much for coming. It means a lot. Yeah. How about the last little set of tunes? Is that good? Just to send you home. So Pascal will play you a couple of reels and uh, we'll do our best to follow him.
one more. You said one more. So. <laughs> and it would be a great honor to play one more. Thanks again. Um, we're going to slow things down because we want you to be just in a little more focused mode when you step in your car and drive and make the <laughs> wet roads back to your homes. And we're going to play a beautiful waltz uh, written by a friend of us. He's a great musician called Mario Loisel. He sadly passed away uh, a couple of years ago, but he left some beautiful, beautiful tune. And he's he's mostly in the companies. Uh, he's well known for being the last one up. Who just play as as long as someone played a fiddle, even if it was a drunken person who had to play a fiddle, he would stay there, and be ready to play chords for anyone who wanted to play tunes till the end of the night. But also, he had a great gift as a composer. And he, he writes a tune that don't have many notes. It's just like it has took away everything that was not important in the tune, just the essential stays. And this is the case with this one. He called it Fort Calqui. So I'll play that one for you. Thank you. 